hey guys welcome back to my channel it's bb mira here again if you're new do not forget to hit the subscribe button and subscribe to my channel if you're not new thank you for sticking around so today's video is very 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 serious and i will let you guys to watch the full video and actually understand what it is all about so let me brief you a bit before we go ahead to see this video so a pharmaceutical giant company known as pfizer actually went ahead to carry out a drug experiment on sick nigerian in brackets african children yes this happened way back but then they tried to put it under cover these drug experiments were not tested and consent were not signed even the parents of those sick children were not aware that their children were within this drug i can't even wrap my head around this thing like seriously and then 11 children ended up dying while some were deformed i'm just going to leave you guys to watch the full video but the huge question is what were the african leaders doing during this period because i guess they were actually charged and then either they were threatened or uh, whatever whatever to drop the charges and all but this news evaporated it disappeared it went undercover nobody ever heard of it they are just trying to deal with that now why did we let this happen that is the question but before i keep blabbing or saying anything i want you guys to watch this video and actually get a detailed information about all the evil and inhuman things that they let these people come down to africa to try out why didn't they try it out elsewhere why must it be africa but then i guess i'm talking too much let me let you guys just see this video the world continues to focus on this case. We'll focus on the content of the thousands of State Department cables that WikiLeaks is continuing to publish. One of the cables reveals that the pharmaceutical giant Pfizer hired investigators to dig up dirt on Nigeria's former attorney general last year in an effort to pressure him to drop a $6 billion lawsuit against the company. The lawsuit stemmed from a notorious 1996 drug experiment Pfizer conducted on sick children in Nigeria. Gardner that was based on the best-selling novel by John John Le Carre. In 1996, Pfizer's researchers selected 200 children for an experimental drug trial. About 100 of the kids were given an untested oral version of the antibiotic Trovan. Researchers did not obtain signed consent forms, and medical personnel said Pfizer did not tell their parents their children were getting the experimental drug. Eleven children died. Others suffered disabling injuries, including deafness, muteness, paralysis, brain damage, loss of sight, slurred speech. The details of the experimental drug. Eleven children died. Others suffered disabling injuries, including deafness, muteness, paralysis, brain damage, loss of sight, slurred speech. The details of the case were first exposed in 2000 in an investigative series in the Washington Post. In 2007, Nigerian officials brought criminal and civil charges against Pfizer in a multi-billion dollar lawsuit. The State Department cable from 2009 details a meeting between Pfizer's country manager Enrique Legere and U.S. officials in Abuja. The, the, cables reads, the cable reads, according to Legere, Pfizer had hired investigators to uncover corruption links to federal attorney general Michael Aundaka to expose him, put pressure on him to drop the federal cases. A few months later, Nigeria settled with Pfizer for just $75 million. Joe Stevens is a staff writer for the Washington Post. He was part of the investigative team that broke the story in 2000. He's joining us from the offices of the Washington Post in Washington, D.C. And we're joined here in studio, in studio by Musikulu Mojid, a Nigerian journalist who's worked on this story for the next newspaper in Lagos. He's a Ford Foundation International Fellow at City University of New York here in the city. We welcome you both to Democracy Now! Joe Stevens, let's start with you. Lay out the scope of this, uh, of the whole experiment that uh, Pfizer did in Nigeria. This goes back 14 years. It's an amazing twisted saga in the WikiLeaks development. And it's just the latest twist and a just amazing story. In 96, Pfizer was trying to, to get approval for a new antibiotic. They thought it was going to be a blockbuster drug. And as part of this, they wanted to test it on children because uh, you could get an extension on your patent and make billions more potentially by testing on children. But it's very difficult to get children to take an experimental drug in the U.S. There's a lot of hoops to jump through. Parents are trying to uh, put together the trials. 
And during this time, one of the lead researchers who, who was in charge of this drug called Trovan saw that there was a record meningitis epidemic in Sub-Saharan Africa. They very quickly, in a matter of weeks, put together a clinical trial, loaded up their experimental drug on a DC-9 and flew it to northern Nigeria. Um, generally, these pediatric trials, they can take years to put together. This was done very quickly. They arrived at one of the most uh, uh, disgusting fetid hospitals in the world, according to Doctors Without Borders uh, in Kano. And this hospital was besieged with patients, people bringing in their children, often carried on their backs to this epidemic camp. And Doctors Without Borders had set up there. They were using an approved drug to treat children. Pfizer came in, took over some wards, and started giving out their experimental drug. Half the children got, got Trovan, half got a proven drug, but they got a substandard dose. And Pfizer was there for a few weeks, tried out its drug, and flew back out. No one really knew, other than people who were in this hospital, knew this had taken place until we came in uh, four years later in 2000 and did an investigative look at this. And what we found is that Pfizer had no written, signed, informed consent forms from parents which parents knew that their children were taking an experimental drug and had agreed to this. That's standard procedure in the West, in the U.S. and Europe. They didn't have these. Pfizer says, nonetheless, that parents knew what they were doing. Some people who were in the hospital at the time told us they had no idea what they were doing. They defended their trial and said that this was an ethical trial to do, uh, partly because they had an ethics approval from Nigeria, and they gave us a copy of this report. We later found out that this was not a real ethics approval letter, that the letterhead it was composed on didn't exist at the time of the trial. And later, the lead investigator for Pfizer in Nigeria acknowledged to us that when there was an FDA audit in the U.S., Pfizer had called and said, we need a copy of this ethics approval letter immediately. He went to his office, put it together, signed it himself, backdated it. And th this has been going on for a long time. After our stories, there was an official federal investigation in Nigeria, but it was never made public. It disappeared. And many years later, we finally got a copy of this report. It concluded that Pfizer had violated both Nigerian law and international law and was very critical. Um, it also mentioned that members of the investigative panel had been the target of death threats during their investigation. Um, we were told there were three copies of this report. Uh, attorneys in the U.S. who brought cla a class action lawsuit said they had spent years trying to find this report that we came up with. Cla a class action lawsuit said they had spent years trying to find this report that we came up with. One they tracked to a uh, safe and when they opened the safe, it was not there. Another was supposedly in the possession of a man who died before the lawyers got to him. After we made this report public, uh, there was a new set of public officials in power in Nigeria, and they decided to bring criminal and civil charges against Pfizer, including homicide. Both Pfizer and some uh, current and foreign criminal and civil charges against Pfizer, including homicide both Pfizer and some uh, current and former employees of Pfizer. The state of Kano in the northern Nigeria settled for $75 million. The federal charges, which initially were seeking $7 billion from Pfizer, just sort of evaporated. We never knew what happened to them. And now this new revelation comes out and raises very serious questions about why those charges just evaporated. We never knew what happened to them. And now this new revelation comes out and raises very serious questions about why those charges just evaporated. We're going to go to break and then we will come back. We're talking to Joe Stevens, who's a reporter at the Washington Post, who uh, broke the story with others in a long investigative series in the year 2000. Uh, and now they have surfaced again.